So, Yurian, we wanted to use your expertise. Your, uh, you've created the Foundation Games for Health Europe. You're also yes. into investment. You've also designed hundreds of games that have won awards. Mm -hmm. Tell us, since last year, yep. is, is there any new trend? Not necessarily, but is there any new trend coming out in games? Yeah, what I see, uh, Denise, thank you for inviting me back, um, is that this is not an era of change, but this is a change of era. Um, which means that a dinosaur could get killed. Um, because dinosaur died when a meteorite hit the earth. Mm -hmm. Um, and nobody wants to happen that with healthcare, I presume. So thinking about that, how can we migrate um, the, let's say, the traditional activities of healthcare into the new? Um, so what I did last year was thinking a lot about how technology in healthcare could liberate resources, because. Three years back, um, Bersi talked about the scanner do, mm -hmm. and now it's there. So people can start measuring data on themselves. Um, we can bring doctors anywhere in the world when they're not be able to f become physical present. Um, and what I see, and I hope my slide's on, you ask me, I, yes, I <laughs> <laughs> without okay, yes, without right. asking permission, all it's right. There. Well, then I'll go sit down. I'll Sorry, go sit, I'll go sit down. No, no, no. no. no? Let's talk about okay, it all right. because you asked me about <laughs> investment, and it's not about. That the was money. the second question that I hadn't yeah. asked yet. So, okay. um, what I see, the trend I see is that technology is able to make to liberate resources, but for technology, you need an interface, um, and I think um, games are a pretty good interface towards technology. Mm -hmm. because it's very close to people. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, um, applied games might become resource liberating mechanisms for healthcare. You mean that applied games will bring a better cost efficiency to healthcare? Yeah, but also people, um, th the fact that you say I sit in front of the television uh -huh. and behind a computer illustrates how we uh, um, feel about technology. Um, and I think we should turn that around. We, we, we are in control and not the technology. So, and I think with good interfacing towards technology, people um, feel that they become back into control on the, uh, with that technology. So it's new, not us following the technology, but the technology following us. Right. So uh, getting back to the investment then, yeah. do you want to say something about that? Well, I, there's a, I found a very interesting um, uh, illustration. It's uh, on the top there. Mm -hmm. What you see, it's in the middle, uh, the middle uh, uh, photo. What you see, um, we need to do more with less resources in healthcare. And we need to do it better. So that means that with the help of technology, uh, we should do that, or we need to do that. So but, and th but that means investment in that technology, not in money, but in time. And what's the, so to, to, to make change possible exponentially, the characteristic of exponential growth in the beginning is that it's slower or lower, as you can see on the curve, than traditional, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, than the traditional ways we uh, did healthcare. So, you, if you believe that technology is able to resor liberate resources, uh, then you should invest time. And I think that curve takes three years, three to five years. So, if you start it, you can't stop it, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So, um, how do you go about finding investors for your? Well, efforts. again, it's not about the money. That's what I discovered. So mm -hmm. money isn't a problem, but that's the other part of my slide. It's, it's about doing. Mm -hmm. We all believe that you learn by doing. Nobody in this room learned how to cycle by reading a book. Okay? We learned how to cycle by making mistakes, by falling. So thinking about that, if people talk about learning, they focus on learning instead of doing. So therefore, I would like to introduce that we get rid of e-health and that we get rid of e-learning and that we start talking about e-doing. So we should do things because 
By doing so, we are making mistakes, we learn, and we go further. Mm -hmm. So that's my, um, that's what I would like to uh, uh, stress on is that we should start doing things. And knowing that we will make mistakes, so game labs, for example, are a pretty good tool for that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what you did uh, in the, the beginning of this, uh, this conference, um, sit down with people and start in workshop literally doing. But I think we should do more uh, experimentally in, in, the, in our day-to-day -day jobs as well. Do you, would you have any examples of those whom you think are jumping into doing in the right way? Well, um, at Reshape, there is a, uh, you know, Lucien Engelo. Maybe you should say a word about Reshape, even if I know. Yeah, yeah Reshape is a, basically, literally what it says. It's the thinking about other forms of healthcare in a healthcare environment. Um, and it's at Radboud University and um, Radboud Medical Center in the Netherlands. And Lucien Engelo is the driving force there. And what he says, um, and I agree totally with him, in a lab, things might explode um, because that's a characteristic of a lab. Mm -hmm. um, but once you see it working, um, that's not enough. You should implement it. And that's basically the transition um, I think is needed that we should, and therefore I, I stress on starting doing things. Um, so we? Radboud is, as I pronounce it, Radboud is um, implementing things that yeah. are coming right out of the lab? Yeah, yeah. Can I you think of any particular ones? Well, they, they might have something like this, don't they? Or yes, it, this is the one yeah. from, uh, from Reshape. Okay, so, so I, I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I how do they use this? Well, th that's one of the things. Um, for example, we do it, um, we start just experimenting with it. But you might think of a chronic ill kid, bring it back in the evening to, to their home. So when she's not able to leave the hospital, um, this, is, this might be as close as, it, as you can get to walk around in your own house, for example. Mm -hmm. Or when a, when a physician isn't able to be physical present in a mm -hmm. certain location, this thing might work as, it, um, a, as second best for being physically present. Okay. Is there uh, any particular, um, besides this, any other particular game that you would like to point out that you think has been a big... Well, I think that the work of Adam Gasly from Brain Plasticity, um, um, where he is now uh, applying for FDA approval uh, for, a for a game that's being classified as a, as a medicine. I that's, think that is very interesting. Yeah, please. I think that's very, that's yeah. groundbreaking. Um, Can you tell, describe it, please? Yeah, it, the, uh, they have two games, uh, one against ADHD and one against schizophrenia. Um, and we all talk about validation. But knowing that 86% of all therapies worldwide are not vali validated, if you need to validate your game, what are you then proving? Are you validating the game or are you validating the therapy? So that's an odd question. Um, for the same reason that nobody has proven scientifically that reading a book works, um, you could ask the same with games. Why should we prove constantly that games work? We know that they work because they're there forever. Since we walk right up, we do two things, telling stories to each other and playing games. So, and therefore they said, well, we're just going to apply for a certification of a medicine because then all discussions uh, we'll get lost. So they've applied, and how far are they with this? Well, um, as you might expect, the FDA, um, the MIT is helping them, by the way. The, um, the FDA is very cooperative, um, as I know, uh, because they also believe that the legislation, for example, should change. Um, and that's, for example, the reason why we at Games for Health uh, hired a couple of space lawyers to think of what if new, if there, what if there is no legislation for certain technology, like games? And space lawyers think of the same, basically. What if two satellites collide? Is the one that came from the right wrong, or the one that came from the left wrong? Because there's no legislation for it. So it's a very intellectual challenge if you want to 
apply and introduce games and technology in healthcare mm -hmm. uh, to think what happened if there's no legislation. So, and, and the FDA in that sense is very eager to think about what will happen if we approved it while there's no legislation. Okay. It's interesting. So maybe we'll see if there are any questions uh, from the audience. Yeah, so you have, also have this uh, have tweet thing. Go ahead, yes. Uh, because I, um, practice what you preach. So I, I'm asking everybody to, to send a, a traditional tweet on paper uh, in our booth on the wish you have on a certain topic or therapy where you would like to have an applied game for. We're collecting them. We will publish them on your um, platform. Mm -hmm. So all the, all, the, all the harvest we collect, we share. And I think we should start working because then we know what people want. And then we start at one and we, and we hopefully end at the bottom before next year mm -hmm. and we present the result. Great. So if you haven't already stopped at his stand and you have an idea of uh, some, a subject for which you think a game should be created, then, uh, then please do stop by.